Thanks, Sam. 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 But then Iran managed to get its allies, Qasem Soleimani, united his allies, allegedly, and took them into the green zone, which no one can enter without the government's permission, and stormed the U.S. Embassy in an incredibly public humiliation uh, of Donald Trump. Not only because they stormed the U.S. Embassy, but also because the protesters, the Iraq protests against the government, have not been able to enter that green zone because the government doesn't let them. In other words, the government allowed the protesters, the pro-Iran protesters, to enter the U.S. Embassy. So Soleimani said, I have the government in my hand, and I can get you when I want. The U.S. responded by killing Qasem Soleimani. The Iranians were shell-shocked. They believed that it was not proportionate. They believed that, okay, we had this tit-for-tat. You didn't need to go and kill Qasem Soleimani. For Donald Trump, he said, I'm so close to elections, you had no right to embarrass me in this way. The Iranians, as a result of being shell-shocked, they've lost this capability to predict what Donald Trump is going to do. And they don't want to go to war, neither do the Americans. Because if you're sitting with Khamenei in Tehran, you know that Iraqis are protesting against your militias, so they won't be able to mobilize as effectively as you want them to. Same in Lebanon. Qasem Soleimani was your top general. He'll be very difficult to replace. Russia will not intervene on your behalf. Anybody who looks at Syria will see Russia has avoided all of the U.S. territories and focused where the U.S. Uh, forces are, are not there. But Iran needs to respond because it looks embarrassed. It looks shell-shocked. This is why we've seen cyber attacks on government websites that have little relevance. We've seen rocket attacks on U.S. bases with no casualties. We've seen Iraqi militias posturing, and we've seen Iran's allies in Baghdad come together and vote for the withdrawal of, of U.S. troops. In other words, it's, every, it's as if somebody hit their hand on the door but wants to show everybody that I'm not really hurt, and this is all chest pumping and this is all chest beating uh, from the Iranians in order to restore some humility and the conf uh, restore some prestige. But what confirms this is actually the Iranian foreign minister's tweet in the last hour in which he's actually said that, or, or, or essentially given the suggestion that we are happy to stop there. As long as the U.S. doesn't respond, we will suffice with this. And for Donald Trump, he will allow this, because at the end of the day, Washington, Washington and Iran want to negotiate. Can we just tell people what, what he said? He sure. said Iran took and concluded proportionate measures in self-defense under Article 51 of the UN Charter, targeting base from which a cowardly armed attack against our citizens and senior officials were launched. We do not seek escalation or war, but will defend ourselves against any aggression. That's what Javed Sarif has said, as you said, within the last hour or so. Why these two bases, though? Because one of them, of course, uh, is where President Trump has visited over the last year. It has to be a high-profile base. It has to be a base that has some sort of meaning. It has to be a base that can be uh, uh, given as a propaganda to the Iranians domestically to say, look, we attacked Ain al-Assad base. This is a place where all the coalition forces are. This is where Trump was before. Look how far it is. Look how far our missiles can reach. We are Iran. We are strong. We are capable of retaliating. And it is because we do not, we do not want war that the situation is not going to escalate. This is Iran trying to say to the Iranian people that I, I was hit by Qasem Soleimani, but the U.S. should fear us. Washington, of course, is not going to buy it. Neither are the American people. So both sides are likely to win here. Trump looks very strong now, whereas we were talking once about the U.S. retreating in the Middle East. Trump, the way that he took out the most powerful military commander in the region in the blink of an eye, has restored that image of U.S. power in the region. For the Iranians, shooting missiles, being able to get near those bases, will tell the Iranian domestic audience that Qasem Soleimani may have been killed, but the U.S. targeted him because we're so powerful, we're so strong. Uh, Trump will go into the U.S. elections. He is likely to win. If he wins, he will be much stronger. The Iranians are hoping that he loses, obviously, because they prefer the Democrats who will come to some sort of agreement. Then we will see serious negotiations take place between Iran and the U.S. Because neither wants war, and also because the Iranians believe that given that Qasem Soleimani uh, has been defeated, given that there are Iraq protests which affect their grip on Iraq as well, they believe negotiations are the way forward. But it doesn't want to go to the table as the belittled and humiliated party. It doesn't want to go to the table and the world says, look how Trump humbled Tehran and made them come to the table. It wants to go as a party that looks strong. And I think Washington will respect that. Yeah, well, you say that, but of course, uh, President Trump is not always predictable, is he, in his, uh, in his manner, either uh, on, on the rest of the, uh, the world's stage or indeed when it comes to the Middle East, all eyes on what he might do next. I think when we see Trump's foreign policy, it's starting to become a bit more predictable, contrary to popular belief. Because in the North Korea situation, for example, 
He upped the ante and he shouted and he barked and he screamed on Twitter about how he would bomb North Korea, how he would threaten them and sanction them. Then he sat with them in Singapore. With Iran, we saw him up the ante and shout and tweet. And, and then he would put a tweet out and say, come, let's negotiate, come, let's talk. He killed Soleimani, though. But he killed Soleimani. That was predictable because the and the humiliation that took place in the U.S. embassy hadn't taken place under Trump's administration. We cannot find an equivalent of such a humiliation to Trump's. Uh, anybody who looks at why Trump reacted can see close to election time, impeachment inquiry domestically. Uh, there's a risk that he might not win the election, according as to to some members of his party. Plus a challenge to U.S. power, which is what got him in position in the first place. It was this "Make America Great Again." I will make America strong. I will not make it weak like Obama, where everybody took advantage, the Russians and the like. The Iranians hit Trump where it hurt, so he reacted where it hurt. In other words, it was a tit for tat in a very understandable way for Donald Trump. So this is why I think, we've, and also when you look at the US, US has no appetite for troops abroad. Trump, when he came on his election campaign, one of his promises was to bring the troops home, whether it's from Syria, from Afghanistan, and from Iran, because he knows the US population. He spent several hundred over the last few days. Because he had to. Because, he ha because of the, the changing circumstances that took place in the region. Uh, because in Syria, the Russians and Turks began to dominate because in Iraq, the Iranian uh, threat was growing. But Trump, unless he's forced to, does not want to send troops. Trump is not looking for a war. Washington is not looking for a war. Trump simply wants to go down as the greatest US president in history who built his economy, who made America's enemies bend the knee, who made America's enemies come to the table, who made this great peace deal with Iran, made this great rapprochement uh, with Russia. He wants to do everything that Obama couldn't. And that's why I think with Trump, it's more personal. It's a pride issue more than US foreign policy. Don't humiliate me, and we'll get along very well. I will bully you, uh, bend the knee to me. And that's the way Trump conducts his foreign policy. Thank you very much.